All right, am I on here? Yeah. So sexual violence is a disturbing part of the human experience. And although it can be experienced by people of all gender identities, it remains an experience that is statistically female. Conversations about sexual violence have gained traction since the 1990s, and especially over the past 10, 15, 20 years, these conversations have expanded to very productive places. We talk about consent today, we talk about the role of institutions like Penn State in protecting their students, and we talk about the role of men in ending this type of gendered violence. But when I hear these conversations, I always feel like there's a piece that's missing. And that is the way that sexual violence fits into a more holistic female experience at Penn State and in the world at large. And because issues of sexual violence are very pervasive uh, on college campuses, it's extremely important to talk about those. They're experienced by hundreds of students across the country. But the issue remains that not all female students experience issues of sexual violence, but I do think that there are issues of gendered harassment and violence against women and issues like that that are faced by students every single day. And these issues can range from seemingly insignificant things, things that, as I talk through these stories, I'd like you to think about if you've experienced them or if maybe someone you know has told you about these experiences. And perhaps one of the less significant is um, the scene of the frat party, right? So Penn State, Greek life's big here, and I would say most of us have probably attended a frat party here. And it is not uh, super uncommon, I would say, for men at these parties to demand to see a woman's boobs if she wants to get a drink at the bar. And although this has never happened to me, thank God, it's happened to a lot of my friends. And what's very interesting about this is, of course, the absurdity of someone asking that in such a public location. But what's also interesting is the way that women react to it. Because the first time someone asks you to see your boobs if you want to get a beer, uh, it's disgusting and you're shocked and you're 18 years old and you're just out of high school and you can't believe someone just said that to you. But after the second time, the third time, and the fourth time, and the twelfth time that someone asks you to do that, it becomes normalized. You kind of brush it off and you move on with your life and you leave the party or whatever. And, you know, a lot of people brush that off. You Maybe it doesn't profoundly affect your experience. Um, but then there are kind of more, more intimate, more physical types of violations and harassment. I can remember uh, it was the beginning of my junior year here at Penn State and I was walking down Beaver Avenue. I had just crossed Garner Street and I was walking home from a party and I had two friends in front of me and I was the third one in line and I saw a guy coming up and I could just tell by the way he looked. I was like, he's going to say something, he's going to do something. And sure enough, he comes up, my friends walk by, he grabs the butt of the first girl, he grabs the butt of the second girl and of course I know what's coming and before I can react, he grabs my butt. And so, me being me, I turn around and I grab his hand, and I say, what do you think you're doing? And the most interesting thing about this experience is not what happened to me, but this guy's reaction. He looked at me like I was a crazy one, like I was the one who was out of line, like he wasn't the one who had just violated my personal space and dignity by grabbing my butt on the street. But even that, I wouldn't say, profoundly changed my Penn State experience. Um, but of course, these issues can elevate still more. I know there's this time, it was my sophomore year of college, I was at a fraternity party, and I was drinking, and I had friends in that frat, and I got tired, and my friend was like, it's fine, like, you can just stay here, you can go upstairs and sleep in my bed. I was like, nice, don't have to walk home in the cold. And so I go, and I fall asleep, and in the middle of the night, I feel movement in the bed. And I woke up, and I was still kind of drunk and kind of groggy, and it's not my friend, it's his roommate, who I didn't know. And I open my eyes and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, go away, I'm trying to sleep, leave me alone. And he left. And I fell back asleep and I woke up in the morning and I was walking home and I thought to myself that I was so lucky, that I was so lucky that I felt the bed move, that I was lucky that I woke up, that I was lucky that I wasn't too drunk to say something and I was so lucky that when I did say something, he left. And then I remember thinking that I shouldn't feel lucky. It should not be a favor to me to not be sexually assaulted. But the reality of the situation is I was lucky because hundreds of women are not. Um, a friend told me one time a story about her experience. She was at a party. 
she woke up the next morning, realized she had been drugged, and she tells me this, and she goes, yeah, Melissa, I was, like, actually raped. And I said, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Can I do anything for you? And she goes, I mean, I don't know. Like, I literally have sex with everyone anyways. Like, can you really rape me? What was her reaction? And what's so disturbing about this is that this is not uncommon. This is not, I have not had a particularly traumatic Penn State experience. In fact, I would say I've had a very blessed Penn State experience. But I lost count of people who had told me they'd been sexually assaulted at Penn State at 30 people. And that was two years ago. That was in the spring of 2013. And many more people have told me their story since then. And what really troubles me about this situation is, of course, the violation of humanity and dignity of another person. But to me, it really hurts that it happens at Penn State. Because at Penn State, we're proud to be a part of this community, right? I love telling people I go here. How many people talk about the Penn State experience? This has been the best four years of my life. And I want to be able to celebrate that experience and be proud of it. But at the same time that we celebrate it, we have to acknowledge that not everyone's been afforded that same blessing, that same blessed experience. And so what I ask people to do today is to question those things that seem so normal. Question asking a girl to see her boobs if she wants to get a beer. And acknowledge the fact that not everyone's Penn State experience has been as blessed as yours. And do something to improve it. And that can be anything from telling the guy at the bar, dude, just give her a beer, like calm down, to telling someone on the street to leave someone alone, or making sure your friend gets home safely. Because Penn State is an amazing place. It's an incredible place. But it's also an imperfect one, and we share a responsibility for fixing it. Thank you.